What's up, people? So today we're talking about which muscle groups make you look jacked. So if you're just trying to look a little bit more monstrous, this is going to be the tier list for you. So the tiers we have, tier one, top of the pile, supremely stacked. Tier two, packed to the max, yiggity yacked, jiggity jacked, and the final tier is no. So we're going to start at the bottom. First on the list for the no tier is the anterior tibialis. Now this is that muscle on the front of your shin and its function is to lift your toe. Now no woman or, or man is going to be like, damn, you've got some nice, you've got some nice shins going over there. No, okay, it's barely visible, doesn't really hypertrophy very much, but it might still be worth training, especially if you are a distance runner, because it is important for preventing shin splints, as well as absorbing the impact from each stride. Next up, we have a few deep internal hip muscles, the psoas, the QL, the iliacus, the piriformis. These muscles are very, very important for athleticism, and if you tweak one, if you pull one, if you strain one, you're going to know. It's going to make your life really shitty for a few weeks, possibly a few months. But in terms of making you look jack stacked or packed to the max, they're not really going to be doing a whole lot because they are not visible. Next up, we have digestive and cardiac muscles. So these are also not really visible at all. And I do think they might hypertrophy to a certain extent if you eat a lot of food or, you know, if you, uh, or a distance runner, you can actually get an enlarged heart, or if you take a shitload of steroids. But in terms of making you look like a monster, well, not so much. And then we have the soleus. So this is one of the two calf muscles. This is the one under the gastroc. It doesn't really look that impressive, even if it's big. You can kind of see it a little bit. It might help raise up the calf a little bit, but overall, not really going to do much. All right, getting into the jiggity jack tier, we have the gastroc. So this is going to be much more visible than the soleus, and if someone has impressive calves, this is probably the muscle that is going to be visible. And I think if you have very, very lagging gastroc, yeah, it'll look it'll look bad. It'll you'll, this is what has the the chicken leg appearance. Okay, so you know Chris Hemsworth, he found out. You post that triceps flex, you're like, oh yeah, everyone's gonna think this is fucking cool, but then you have no calves, and that's the only thing anyone notices. So, if this is lagging severely, you might want to focus on it. Next up, we have adductors. Now, again, if these are lagging, the inside of your thighs is just going to be non-existent, and so even if you have decent quads, your leg is going to look small from the front, okay? So, if you have lagging adductors, and I have seen this, you might want to focus on them a little bit. For most people, although I would say they do shave together if they're overdeveloped, which is annoying, and plus, usually compounds are enough to get the job done. Next up, we have obliques. Now, certainly some oblique development can contribute to a jacked look, especially if you are lean, but most people aren't lean enough to have them actually be visible. And I think if you overdevelop this area, it can thicken your waist and actually impact your aesthetics. Next up, we have the hamstrings. Now, these are absolutely essential for sprinting, for jumping, for doing anything remotely athletic. In fact, I would say for any muscle group, this is going to be what contributes the most to speed. Now, the glutes are also going to be involved, but because they are responsible for hip extension and knee flexion, they are just going to be absolutely essential for running fast. However, in terms of making you look jacked, uh, not that important. So next up, we have the serratus. So this muscle, you can kind of see when you're very, very lean. Uh, it sort of covers the ribs. And if you're not lean, you just won't be able to see this at all, really. And it, it won't contribute to your appearance whatsoever. But if you are under about maybe 12% body fat, suddenly I do think training this area can make a pretty significant impact in your physique. All right, next up, we have the rotator cuff. So this is the supraspinatus subscapularis, infraspinatus, and there's one other one, there's four of them. Some of them are actually, you can't see them at all, like this, the subscapularis, it's beneath the scapula, so you can't really see it. Um, but I do think some of these muscles are visible when you do like a back double biceps, and they do contribute to that look of 
thickness and density of the upper back, which I do think is pretty important. But since you can't see all of them, they're only tier four. All right, getting into tier three, Yiggity Yacked, we have the chest. Now, some people might put this a little bit higher, uh, but I think that the chest, as long as it's not completely absent, it's probably going to be getting the job done. Um, but if it's super overdeveloped, it's not really going to be helping your physique a ton because it doesn't really help your frame. Maybe from the side a little bit, but I think other muscle groups are going to be overall more important. Similarly, the biceps is also in this tier because when you're just standing there, your biceps don't really, I mean, they're not really visible. It's not like the triceps or the traps or something else that does help to pad out your frame. Unless you're like flexing or something or, or you're, you're, you know, oh yeah, I'm just relaxing. Oh. Um, they're probably not going to be doing that much. Next up, the front delts. Now, it's often said that you don't have to train this area. You don't need to isolate this area. Uh, just do your presses. That's enough. And I think that's true for some people, but if you get bigger front delts, this can absolutely help your appearance, and I do think this is often overlooked. Glutes! Yeah, so this is uh, definitely important, and, you know, actually a lot of men are surprised to hear this, but women, they love a good booty just as much as we do, fellas. So if you're neglecting this area, you should probably get to thrusting. A barbell, a barbell, a barbell. Next, the rectus abdominis. So this is the six pack muscle. I think for most people, they're not quite gonna be lean enough to where this matters. Plus if you're wearing a shirt, this won't. You can sometimes see your abs through your shirt occasionally and might help with that. Um, but overall, probably not gonna be a huge determinant for most people. But I do think if you're in that 12 to 17 or 18% zone, thickening up this area, can make you look pretty significantly leaner. And if you're below 12%, well, that's it's still gonna help as well. By the way, this video is sponsored by me, or maybe you, I don't know. This is one of those things where I don't typically do sponsored videos, I don't run ads on the channel, and so um, I support myself through my writing. So if you're enjoying this video, definitely check out my books. They will help you a lot in your fitness journey. Now, back to the video. Next up, the opposite of the rectus abdominis, the spinal erector. So these are important for the overall thickness of the back. A tasteful thickness of it. Especially when viewed from the side. So if you're looking at someone and they just don't seem to have any kind of density to their back, usually it's either lagging traps or lagging erectors. And I would say lagging erectors is pretty damn common especially amongst those who don't really do any kind of deadlifts or squats or any kind of spinal loading activities. I'm looking at you, calisthenics boys. Now, quads. Some people might put this in tier two. I could, I could totally get that. You can make a pretty strong argument for that, especially given their growth potential. But I would say this is not really the path to getting jacked, okay? If they're lagging, bring them up. But if you already have like 24, 25 inch legs and you want that, that, beastly, monstrous, manly, masculine look, bigger quads is probably not the answer. You do see some Olympic weightlifters who have large amounts of lean body mass, but so much of it is in their glutes and quads and adductors that they kind of just look weirdly unbalanced and kind of bottom heavy. Now getting into the packed to the max tier, we have rear delts. Now, these are not going to be visible from the front, typically, unless you're doing like a most muscular or something. But I would say from the back, very, very important. You know, they give you that sort of t-shirt hanging off of the shoulders kind of look. They're visible from the side, very, very important. And overall, this is just going to be a great bang for your buck area in terms of looking like a freak. Next up, triceps. I would easily put these above biceps. I think people focus on the biceps too much. The triceps just have a lot more growth potential. Plus, when you're at rest, they're in that shortened position. And so, you know, it, it's very easy to just, you know, casually flex your biceps. Whereas if, you know, you can't really casually flex your biceps. Like, people know, bro. People, people know. Next, the brachialis. So this is a somewhat little known muscle between the biceps and the triceps, and particularly when you are lean, this can have a pretty dramatic impact on visual aesthetics, 
even more than the biceps, I would say. You look at someone like Arnold Schwarzenegger, I think the, the key to his success in terms of the appearance of the arm, it wasn't the biceps. It was that brachialis. Next up, the teres major. So this is often confused for the lats. It has a very similar function. It's also going to be bringing the arm down or bringing the arm alongside the body. So they have, they have overlapping functions, but it is a separate muscle, and I think it is important for looking yiggity yiggity yacked. It contributes to width just as much as the lats, if not more, uh, and I think this is often overlooked. But since it's trained in a very, very similar way, often you don't need any specific exercises anyway. Next up, the rhomboids. Now, these are often confused for the traps. They have a pretty similar function. They're in a similar area. Uh, but they are not the traps. And I do think that these are important for looking pretty pretty stacked and packed, you know. Um, they contribute to that look of thickness of that upper back. And that is what makes you look like a beast. Next up, we have the lats. Now, you can make an argument for these being in Tier 1. Certainly, I think when combined with the Terry's Major... Anything that contributes that much to your overall V taper, strong case for tier one. But I would say if you separate these, they take up two spots in tier two rather than one spot in tier one. Uh, essentially, they are trained the same way. So yeah, you could make an argument for just consolidating here. But I like to be pedantic. All right, getting into the supremely stacked tier, we have, and a lot of people have been waiting for this. Everyone knows it. We have the traps. So not just the upper traps. But the middle traps, lower traps, when you take them all combined, this is a lot of meat. And more importantly, this is a lot of meat exactly in the right area. We also have an adjacent muscle group. Yes, I'm talking about the neck. Now, if you have a big neck, that alone is going to make you look jacked. You could have like just an average physique everywhere else. If you've got a big neck, it stands out. On the other hand, if you have like a 12 or a 13 inch just bitch of a neck... Even if you look jacked everywhere else, and I've seen this especially with some, some roid heads, where everywhere else is freaking huge, but then they have this weird little bitch neck that just looks really, really strange. I, I, they must know it, so why, why don't they train it? It just looks fucking weird. Next up, we have the side delts. Now, I would say these are even more important than rear delts. You could maybe put them on the same level, but they're, they're visible from the side. They give you that, that look of, of being wider because you are wider. You can see them from the side, obviously. You can see them from the back. If you have small delts, there is nowhere to run. You cannot hide from them. They are always going to be visible. They are always going to be obvious. You might say, oh, well, oh, I have narrow clavicles. That's even more of a reason to train them. You look so soft. Your compliment was sufficient. Next up, the forearms. Now, typically, human beings, we don't go around shirtless. We are occasionally, but that is not our default setting in the modern world unfortunately, but that's just, it's just how it is, right? We live in a society. And so often you can't see most of your physique, but the forearms are absolutely going to be visible a large part of the time. And if you see someone who works with their hands, carpentry, woodworking, electrical engineering in the field, masturbation, any of these normal human male activities, they're going to be working your forearms on a very, very daily basis um, which can get them jacked, which that alone is going to make you look, you know, pretty impressive. Finally, and this is a little bit of a controversial one, your face and jaw. Now, most people are not going to be training this. You could argue maybe they're a little bit passively trained as you're like, Ooh, you're trying to get the weight up. You're like, Ooh. Um, but you do see some men, maybe they, they, they just have like a desk job. They're just, their face looks like melted fucking tallow. Like a candle just melted and there's no definition to their face. Often this is accompanied by a higher body fat percentage. But I do think that training your face can have a pretty dramatic impact in a lot of cases. Okay, so, you know, there's various like exercises you can do. Maybe I'll do a whole video on that. But yeah, if you have a jacked face... That's what people see most of the time, and so it's going to have the biggest impact. And this is also the reason why training your neck has a big impact, training your traps, side delts. It's because they're around the face, and that's most of the time that you spend interacting with someone. All right, that is all for this video. If you like this one, definitely check out my books. They give you the information that you need in order to get these areas 
just a little bit more swole than they are right now. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.